Hey, hi Miro, and welcome back to Doggy Doggy Literature Club. So, in the last part, we showed our poems, our poem actually, just when it was just one, to the girls. And apparently, we got uh, Sayori, but I changed my mind and went for Yuri now. <laughs> So I don't know what will happen today. Let's find out. Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple of days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Hiro. Yo, Sayori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kinda angry. Angry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Eh? That's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? <laughs> Uh, why that, all of a sudden? No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. Uh, uh. Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets its contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. <laughs> I knew it. I can see it right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. Or did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. So either you're not hungry and wanted an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so that only leaves the one option. I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. But that's not kind of how it works. That's not really how it works. That's... that's not it. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Huh? I didn't know that she was listening in. Her face is in her book as always. <clears throat> yeah, uh, I wasn't listening or anything, it was just something in my book. Yuri, tell the hero to let me borrow some money. That's... Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mis mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. So you were listening. Uh, ah, did I just... I di didn't mean that. I got too absorbed into my book. Uh, <laughs> really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. The what? Retribution. That! <laughs> Still, coming from you, Sayori. I guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? Are you speaking from experience? <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But, but... You wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on. Give me more credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> what? Yeah. Out of nowhere, something smacks the Sayori in the face and tumbles, tumbles onto the desk. Ow. What was... Huh? A cookie. Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. <laughs> Is this a miracle? 
It's because I paid my, I paid my restitution. Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> damn, Natsuki is so cute. They're all so cute. God damn. But Yuri has the biggest boobs. I was just gonna give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. I was, it was totally worth seeing your reaction though. <laughs> Natsuki. That's so nice of you. What? I'm so happy. So Yuri hugs the cookie. What? what? What's happening? Jeez, just eat it. Sayori happily tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. You're so good! Mm. Sayori suddenly clasps her hand over her mouth. I bit my tongue! <laughs> You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. <laughs> Sorry gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki and wraps her arms around her. Ah, jeez. Uh, I get it, I get it. Cookie is still in hand, Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off of her. <laughs> Sayori suddenly, <laughs> suddenly leans down and takes a bite of Natsuki's cookie. Uh, hey! Did you seriously just do that? <laughs> Mouse full, Sayori trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori. Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Oh no. Uh, where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. It's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's just okay. She really just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Are you jealous? Huh? You didn't think she... She has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. You haven't met me. <laughs> That's true. Excuse me? Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, oh, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Huh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. Boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Ah, uh, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Ah, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must have not heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Ah, I don't, really. I kind of just started recently. I always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool! You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica look at, looks at me. Maybe once I get a little better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Hiro. D -d 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 Does everyone here have a crush on me or something? Monica smiles sweetly. Huh. Didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> Don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. And I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks! So, I didn't miss anything, did I? Not... Uh, not really. 
That's usually about Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. Looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. I'm really curious to talk to Yuri a little bit more. But at the same time, I would feel bad for distracting him from reading. I catch a glimpse of the cover of, the, of her book. It looks like the same book that she lent to me. More than that, she seems to be on the first few pages. Ah. Oh. Crap. I think she noticed me looking at her. She sneaks another glance at me and our eyes meet for a split second. But that only makes her hide her face deeper in, in her book. Sorry. I was just spacing out. I muttered this, sensing I made her uncomfortable. Oh. It's fine. If I was focused, then I probably wouldn't have noticed it in the first place. But I'm just rereading a bit of this, so... That's the book you gave me, right? Mm-hmm. I wanted to reread some of it. Not for any particular reason. Just curious, how come you have two copies of the same book? Ah. Well, when I stopped at the bus bookstore yesterday... Uh, that's not what I meant. I mean... I just happened to buy two of them. Ah, I see. There's something fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decide to let it go. I'll definitely start reading it soon. I'm glad to hear. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. It's a very engaging and relatable story. Is that so? What's it about, anyway? Well... Hmm... Yuri closes her, the book and scans her eyes over the back. The book is titled Portraits of Markov. There's an ominous looking eye symbol on the front cover. Alright. I just wanted to make sure I don't accidentally give anything away. Sure you do. Basically, it's about this girl in high school who moves in with her long lost younger sister. What? But as soon as she does so, her life gets really strange. Well, life really is strange. She gets targeted by these people who escaped from a human experiment prison. And while her life is in danger, she needs to desperately choose who to trust. No matter what she does, she ends up destroying most of her relationships and her life starts to fall apart. That's kind of... That's kind of dark, isn't it? Yuri made it sound like it was going to be a nice story, so that dark turn came from nowhere. <laughs> Yuri gently giggles all of a sudden. I'm afraid. I am afraid of her. Are you not a fan of that sort of thing, Hiro? No, it's not that. I mean, I can definitely enjoy this, those kinds of story, stories, so don't worry. I hope so. Yeah, I totally forgot that Yuri's into those things. She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. I, it's just that those kinds of stories, they challenge you to look at life from a this strange new perspective. When horrible things happen, not just because someone wants to be evil, but because they have their own goals, or their own philosophy that they believe in. Then suddenly, when you thought you related to the protagonist, they're made out to be the naive one for letting their one-sided morals interfere with the villain's plans. I, I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well, I guess it's alright then. But I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem. When I let things like books and writing fill my thoughts, I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. Oh. Oh, this reminds me of someone. So I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. And please stop me if I start talking too much. That's... I really don't think you need to worry. That just means you're passionate about reading. The least I can do is listen. It's a literature club, after all. Ah, oh, that's... Well, that's true. In fact... 
I might as well get started reading it, right? You don't have to. <laughs> what are you saying? Just a moment ago, you said you were looking forward to it. Uh, uh, uh. Let me just get the book. I quickly retrieved the book that I had put into my bag. Alright, it's fine if I sit here, right? I slip into the seat next to Yuri's. Ah, uh, yeah. Are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to. It's just something I'm not very used to. That is, uh, reading in company with someone. I see. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. Uh, alright. <clears throat> I open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri means about reading in company. It's as if I can feel her presence over my shoulder as I read. It's not a particularly bad thing. Maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri is in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. It looks like she's reading from my book instead. S sorry I was just... Yuri, you really apologize a lot, don't you? I... I do? I don't really mean to. Sorry. I mean... <laughs> you apologize for apologizing. <laughs> Here, this should work, right? I slide my desk until it's up against Yuri's, then hold my book one more between the two of them. Ah, I suppose so. Yuri timidly closes her own copy. Once we each lean a little bit, our shoulders are almost touching. It feels like my left arm is in the way, so I instead use my right hand to hold the book open. Ah, uh, I guess that makes it kind of difficult to turn the page. Here. Yuri takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book within her thumb and forefinger. This time I won't forget to do this! Aha! Now I have a thumbnail. Shit, shit, shit! Okay. Ah. I do the same with my right arm on the right side of the book. That way I turn a page and you raise it under their thumb after it flips to their side. But uh, in holding it like this, we're all even closer together than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. It's as if I can feel the warmth of Yuri's face and she's in the corner of my vision. Are you ready? Huh? To turn the page. Ah, sorry. I think I got a bit distracted for a second. I glance over at Yuri's face again and our, our, our eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Ah. That's okay. You're not as used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a bit longer. It's probably the least I can do, since you've been so patient with me. Uh, yeah, thanks. We continue reading. Yuri no longer asks me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, they just assume that she finished the page before me, so I turn it by my own volition. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning each page almost feels like an intimate exchange. My thumb gently letting go of the page, letting it flutter over to her side as she sketches it under her own thumb. Hey, Yuri. This might be a silly thought, but... The main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. You think so? How does she? Well, I guess she's more uh, blunt in other ways, but she also second guesses all of the things that she says and does. Like she's afraid she'll do something wrong. It's not like you can see into your head or anything. But they're kind of reminiscent of some of your mannerisms. I... I see. Yuri remains silent for a moment. But Hiro, that's probably a terrible thing to have in common with her. Uh, that's so embarrassing that you think that. Wait. I didn't mean it in a bad way or anything. Sorry, I really didn't know you were self-conscious about that sort of thing. I guess I more meant that it's kind of cute. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, what are you saying all of a sudden? I... Okay, everyone. Damn it, Monica, you ruined it. Huh? 
I think it's about time we share today's wines with each other. We might not have, not have enough time if we wait too long. Ah. Ah. Yuri exhales, spared from finishing her thought. Is that alright, Yuri? You look kind of down. I'm sorry if you haven't been looking forward to this. Ah, it's not... It's fine. Yuri releases her hand from the book, causing it to close on top of my thumb. Alright. I guess I'll do some more reading tonight. Or would you prefer I only read it with you? Huh? Um, I guess I don't have too much of a preference either way. Hmm. In that case, I'll read a little more tonight. It'll be more fun to read with you after he picks up a bit, you know? That's good reasoning. In that case, feel free to finish the first two chapters in your own time. Alright! I stand up. I make a mental note of where I left off in the book, then slip it back into my bag. You know, they invented bookmarks a couple of years ago. And by a couple of years ago, I mean, like, 1000 years ago? No. Maybe not 1000. Maybe 500, though. 500 years ago. Uh, who should I show my poem to first? Well, of course, Yuri. Let's see what you've written for today. Boop, boop. Yuri stares at the poem with a surprised expression on her face. Do you... like it? Hiro? How did you pick up on this so quickly? Just yesterday I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing. Maybe that's why. You did a good job explaining. I really wanted to try giving it more Im imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. What? Even her hands are pure sweaty. Mom spaghetti. I'm not used to this. Used to what? I don't know. It's fine, take your time. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. Yeah. Just being appreciated like this, I guess. It's why it probably sounds really stupid. But seeing someone motivated by my writing, it just makes me really happy. Got a message. It's a fucking manga app again! Are you saying you've never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. Really? I don't believe it. I really only write for myself. And besides, people would just laugh at me. Do you really think that? Again, Yuri nods. Huh. Even your close friends? <laughs> I think we are our close friends. Yuri doesn't respond to that. I wonder why. Another message. And it's the fucking manga app again. <laughs> anyway. Do you want to share the poem you wrote today? Yeah. I do. If it's with you. What? The raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scattering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences, well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity. The raccoon, an urge. The moon increments its face and reflects that much more light of my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited, or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon is taken, is taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes angry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows, him, shows me its excitement. A rush of blood, classic Pavlion, pa, 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 Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread and I feel 
and I feed myself again. Huh? Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what this is supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in any in my more unusual hobbies. It's the sort of things that I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So I sometimes don't enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? Be because they're embarrassing. And people would make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that, Hiro? Well, yeah, I guess I do. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best we can do is respect each other and our individualities. Even if it's difficult sometimes, and some things that make us uncomfortable. After all, if I didn't learn to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. That's a very good way to go about it. I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. You're welcome. We will show my poem to next, Monica. Hi again, Hiro. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. Alright. Great job, Hero. I was going who in my head while reading it. It's really metaphorical. I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. It's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. Yeah. That's what I do. Ex except I, I meet the expectations. <laughs> That way it always counts when I put in some effort. <laughs> that's not very fair. Well, I guess it worked anyway. You know that Yuri likes this kind of writing, right? Writing that's full of imagery and symbolism. Unlike Sayori, who likes using simple and direct words to describe happiness and sadness, Yuri likes it when readers are left to derive their own meaning out of it. It's very challenging to write like that effectively. Both allowing people to get something out of it just by feel, or letting them deeply anal analyze all of the nuances. I, it can take years of practice, which I'm assuming Yuri has at, at this point. I never really asked though. I'm sure I'm nowhere near her level yet. Don't worry so much about that. You do your own thing. Just keep exploring and learn by trying new things. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sighing, causing, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Load me. What? Load me? Sa wait, save me, load me. What? Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I'm starting to get weirded out. I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just kind of a thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. 
I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's, what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling. Or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. What? You never know when you might change your mind. What? Or where something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? What? 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 You just you just broke the fourth wall. <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. What? Oh, I like this one, Hiro. It has some nice feelings in it. Ah, I'm glad. Still though, your tone makes it sound like you liked yesterday's poem better. <laughs> I guess you caught me. Are you jealous? Sometimes you know me a little too well for my own good. Well, don't just try to be nice about it. If I'm going, if I'm doing a bad job, then I'd rather just hear it. No, no. I still like this one, I promise. You know I wouldn't lie to you, Hiro. Never, ever. Yeah, I guess so. What made just at this point so great compared to this one, then? Um... Well, no, um, got stuck, something stuck in my mouth. Well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad, but that's why I just go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure that's exactly how it works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah, me neither. Uh, why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Oh, you want to write something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Huh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm. I guess I like happy poems. Not really. You... I got some sad words and it got, it, 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 they were for you instead of Yuri for some reason. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too, yeah, I noticed. Sometimes a little bit of both. That's... there's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet! Yeah, I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad? I can see you liking something sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most, but sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad point can help give the rain cloud a little hug and make a nice happy rainbow. Sayori, that's unexpectedly poetic. Huh? It is? Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. So when are you confessing your feelings then? Thanks, Hero. I should go write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? Jesus Christ, they get, they get longer and longer. <laughs> Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine, all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all of the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in a bottle, all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle a starlight to make amends. 
Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go. <laughs> this, this sounds sexual. Like exploring a dark cave, <laughs> discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. <laughs> I blow dust off my bottle caps. <laughs> it doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done, I open up and in, and in come my friends. In they come, in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other. I'll take them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shudders against the tile between my feet. The tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends. My friends weren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. While all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Holy crap. Sayori, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was gonna write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking so hard about it. My point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Oh, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express my fa myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah, writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. So Yori's always had a habit of getting obsessed, obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Time for Natsuki! Hmm. I liked your last one better. Of course you did, you fucking bitch. I wrote it for you. Now I did it all for Yuri. Huh? Really? Well, yeah, I can tell you were a little more daring with this one. But you're really not good enough for that yet. It fell flat. That may be true, but I just wanted to try something different. I'm still figuring this all out. I mean, I always like points that aren't trying too hard. I hate when people try to sound fancy or add more meaning just by using annoying, complicated language. Just make it, just make it simple, cute and to the point. You decide over heels for all this cryptic nonsense, but I see right through that BS. Ha! Making your breather look so hard for all this deep meaning is just an excuse to have no meaning at all. Are you jealous? I guess that's one way to look at it. Well, everyone has their own opinion. But my opinion is the best opinion. I'm sure you figured that out already. Uh, anyway, here's my point. Maybe you learned something. <sighs> Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, airy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, the chorus, or chorus, I think it's chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. Oh, she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her, her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. That's mean! You're such a dick! 
Not bad, right? It's disgusting! It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this point. I doubt that I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like, anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Yeah. Do you know people like that? Of course, it's about how everyone thinks my... That, that, that doesn't matter, it can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Oh. Oh. Oh, okay, I think I get it. Oh, sorry if I thought it was disgusting, that's okay. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or a guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid if people find out, they'd make fun of you or think less of you. But they just make people stupid. Who cares what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy? I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Huh, that's funny. Yuri wrote some about something similar today. Huh? Did you say Yuri? Yeah. She said her point was about an unusual hobby of hers. I didn't really get it, but she said something similar to you. That people shouldn't make each other feel insecure about those things. Really? Well, I mean, Yuri's pretty weird, so I wouldn't doubt that she has some weird hobbies. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Uh, it's not like I would judge her or anything. <sighs> Natsuki has trouble finding words. I guess I should try not to be so mean to her. Yeah, that's what you should do. She feels insecure about her weird behaviors and stuff. I mean, I always hate people who make me feel insecure. And Yuri made me feel insecure yesterday. But the way you put it, it sounds like she's learned her lesson. Well, I would say so. Even if her writing style is really different, I'm sure she'll appreciate the message in your poem. It's what I do best, after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like, conveying emotion is important. But I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm gonna write a good one for tomorrow, too, so look forward to it. Whew. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Uh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together any, anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Sayori has been working on posters and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? But, um, Monica. Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. Uh. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Got a message. Oh. Just notification. It's my friend's birthday! Happy birthday! Sayori is putting it on all, all the posters in case anyone wants to be to prepare ahead of time. Eh? <laughs> Sayori has been coloring a poster was it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't, you didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Oh, well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know? There is no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I, I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagine it, you really shakes her head in fear. Guys... No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. I remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their points with anyone until just a couple of days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their points out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that, so I'm sorry. <laughs> but, 
and still think we should give it our best. We're the only responsible. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put in a good performance, then we'd inspire the others to do the same. And the more people will perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah, it's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if we all take in standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Uh, uh. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Uh, okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. Alright! Yeah. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. <sighs> I guess I don't really have a choice. Haha, <laughs> that's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway. Let's move on to the main end. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. No, 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 no way! Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you accept it? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little bit more comfortable. Can I go next? <laughs> of course. Now, let's see. Monica flips to the. Uh, wait. Uh, 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 I to yawn. Monica flips to her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. <clears throat> Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica refinishes the recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That, that was so good, Monica. <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just helping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? I, I'll go next. Wow, Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper within her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It's, it's called... After image of a crimson eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed in her books. Her quivering words transform into the sharp syllabus, syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her as if she bewildered even, even herself. I... It's up to me to save this situation. I'm the first to start uploading. Everyone joins me afterward and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the point to her chest and rushes back into her seat. 
Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm in. I'm next then. So Yuri opts up to her. Up her out the. <sighs> I need to drink. Sayori hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called my Mido. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I giggled. <laughs> Sayori? It's a lot harder than I thought. Oh, did you guys do it so easily? Ah, try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your point, so it'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay then. Sayori begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives a, a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori. <laughs> even Hiro liked it. Guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Huh? I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where their sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's, well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. God damn it, Sayori is so cute. Damn it, I don't know which one to go for. <laughs> the next time I'm going to make you pick a point that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know? Okay! Now, who's next? Natsuki? <laughs> don't make me go before Hero. It's not like I can compare it to you guys anyway. Might as well let Hero lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Natsuki? It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I brought for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that doesn't improve over time though. Yeah, maybe. Alright then, that just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah, I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of their seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called... It's called... Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. <laughs> Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's a little un un unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style and it works surprisingly well when she's spoken aloud. When spoken aloud. aloud. Ugh, Jesus, I need to sleep more before recording. The words feel like they bounce up and down as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes and everyone applauds. She shoves back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You'd better not make me do that again. Ah, well, do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people would be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. It's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. But I just saw it is, so... Well, I'm guessing in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea what it's like now. 
Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez. I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know this festival is coming up. The festival co is coming up. Ah, uh, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. My god, it's almost been an hour. Monday's the big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. Alright. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club, and impressing Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep. Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, ah. Why am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, hero, you don't have to say it. Whatever, let's go already. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, no wonder. Um, I was, think I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... I mean, Sayori fumbles with her words. So, let's just say that one day, Yuri has to work home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> oh, damn. I would still work home with Sayori. Sayori? You really would think I would ditch you for Yuri? Huh? But, but... She's so beautiful and smart. Jeez. I already see her in the club every day. Besides, you always seem to really like going home together. I wouldn't just win that for you. You're so silly, Hiro. Think about me too much sometimes. You would deserve this if she wanted it. So, Sayori, I've already made up my mind. I really can't figure you out sometimes. Sorry. Besides, what's the point in speculating something that's never going to happen? Um... The conversation trails off. It's kind of a weird thing for Sayori to care so much about... But I want to respect her and keep her happy too. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time. I'm gonna save. Oh, an empty, there's an empty slot. Okay, so... <laughs> This time I won't, since it's been almost been an hour, this time I won't be doing the poem and then going to the next day. We'll write the poem tomorrow. <laughs> so yeah. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Feel free to leave a like, a comment, and if you're new here, subscribe, please. In the next part, I'm, I'm gonna try to go for Sayori, actually. I really can't make up my mind, so... Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye!